next up we have Jim from Thrive, who's going to talk to us about solving the opioid crisis using streaming video, AI, and other really cool technologies. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jim, take it away. Thank you. So my name is Jim Tafour. I'm the innovation and product lead for Thrive. And as he said, I'm here today to talk about how we're using technology to solve the opioid crisis. And so first I'll introduce uh, Thrive, and we're a technology-enabled behavioral health platform um, really focused on getting people off of opioids and the advancement of collaborative care. So I'm going to break this down into just three easy points, and the first is people. Um, our whole focus is getting people off of opioids. I'm sure everybody's aware of this crisis, and so uh, we're really trying to drive home a platform that helps people get through this crisis. So um, we're doing that by removing barriers, giving these patients access to quality care at any time, and then really um, by equipping the providers with uh, deep insights on their patients in real time during um, therapy sessions and being able to really understand the impact of their care delivery. And so third and foremost, we're using technology to do this and uh, really building blocks from our friends at Amazon through high performance cloud computing, machine learning, and big data analytics. So Thrive is really a virtual platform, a, a called a telemed system for collaborative care. And this is a screenshot of um, one of our session, independent sessions a, between a provider and a patient. And in this view, um, I'm gonna just highlight a couple of the core features of the platform, starting from the top left, the voice and facial recognition to confirm the identity of the patient during these sessions to ensure that the person that they're speaking to online is actually the patient. Um, one of the core features of the, Th the Thrive program is a uh, MAP program, which is a medication-assisted treatment. So this is important for the provider to confirm that they're talking to the patient. Uh, second, to the right of that is real-time patient analytics. During these sessions, we're able to detect engagement, depression, and, and anxiety, and these are key factors in how a provider is going to uh, deliver their care. So during the session, if you can detect that someone's engagement is going off, you can, um, you know, you can reformat how you're delivering that care. And then third, we're really trying to automate the provider workflow to allow them to take on more capacity and to be able to help more people. Um, so the transcription to the right, um, you know, we're running a full transcription of the sessions and then down against the bottom, we have a timeline where we're flagging audio video events for post-session reviews. So this is streamlining the post-review process for the provider and it's also giving them reference points um, so they can go through the different weeks and uh, the different progress points through the care delivery plan. And so what I'm going to do now is go through kind of the high level architecture of how we're hitting those features. And the first uh, is the patient identity validation. So here um, I'm going to start by just talking through ingestion and then we're going to talk about how we're processing that data and then how we're going to distribute the data ultimately through to consumption. So on the left hand side, uh, the profile service is where it all begins. So when a patient begins their um, care plan, we put them through a process of determining a profile on them through voice and facial recognition. And then, um, you know, as you can see, that's being consumed through the Lambda services, distributing that data out to the recognition and the Amazon Lex, among many other models that we're processing against. And then we're taking that process data, we're staging it in uh, an inventory and also through DynamoDB and feeding it through to Redshift, uh, where it's positioned to be picked up through uh, Aurora and our other analytic tools. So on the validation side, um, you'll see that this is between the patient and provider in real time. The patient stream will feed through Kinesis, uh, go down into the recognition, confirm the profile, feed that, in, in, um, feed that information back through the inventory bucket, down through Dynamo, make the correlation and answer a confirmation or denial of identity. Next, I'm gonna talk about the real-time patient analytics and how we're driving those insights. Okay. So here, I'm gonna take the same format. We're gonna talk ingestion and processing and then uh, delivery and consumption. So starting from the left, you have the patient uh, feeding 
video stream through the mobile device, ultimately coming through the Kinesis video stream. And at this point, we're, we're splitting the data. We're taking the raw data and putting it down through Kinesis Firehose and staging it into an S3 bucket for later analysis. So if we change a model, we want to reanalyze the raw footage, we can go back and do that once, you know, if a, if a model is adjusted. Secondary to that, we take the real-time data and push it through a queue service, where it's then fed to orchestrators and then divvied out to different um, analysis services. So if you look up at the orchestrator, it's feeding the stream through to transcribe, which is transcribing the speech to text, and then it's taking that text and putting it through comprehend to pick up different contextual um, engagements. And this is then fed back to the orchestrators, again, uh, going through Lex and recognition to get the facial and voice profile. And then they're coming back in, they're being analyzed by our uh, proprietary algorithms to make sense of that information, feeding it back down through a queue service, and then hitting our Lambda functions to then distribute it to the database. Um, coming out of the S3 bucket across the bottom is where we're getting into our data analytics. So Glue will pick up, do its ETL, basically uh, you know, catalog it and get it into the Spark. And then Spark on EMR is parsing that data and giving us results, sending those out through the SNS service to issue the notifications to the Lambda and then ultimately out to the display for the provider. And then at the same time, it's staging those in our working databases for our data lake for further analysis. Okay, next is going to be the speech to text. And this is really good for the uh, session transcription. And here we're going to have the provider, again, um, going through the client, reviewing, uh, so let me step back here. So this is really a transcription notes to take. We're using the same architecture for those different services. So on the client side, as it's parsing through the Lambda, we're taking, we're taking that data, putting it through transcribe, picking up contextual reference through comprehend, and then again feeding it back out through a queue service, going through the Lambdas, and very similar to the previous, staging it uh, into Redshift and the different database services for further analysis through our data lake. Okay, and so the session timeline is really important for uh, practice management. So a lot of time is being consumed by providers and post-session reviews. So um, after a provider takes on a session, an hour-long session, you know, it could take anywhere from one to two hours post-session to really parse through that information, pick up details that they missed during the live session, and be able to kind of, you know, revamp their care delivery based on that information. So. Um, the timeline across the bottom here, what that's going to do is it's going to flag different events that's being picked up. So as the, as the real-time metrics are picking up engagement, depression, anxiety, they're flagging these events that they're using and then making markers in the timeline so that post-session, it's very easy for the provider to jump into the system, identify key points in the session, and then really hone in on those to make a, you know, make a, make a uh, change to their plan if needed. Okay, so the session timeline is really using um, a very generic, generic architecture for the video on demand services provided by Amazon. So here we're going to uh, take the source video through the bucket. And again, if, it's a, um, if this is a time where we've revamped the model and we have to go back and reanalyze it, we can reach down in the Glacier archive and pull that back up, analyze that data, push it through the workflow. So we have a series of AWS step functions that will handle the ingest handing those off again uh, for processing, then taking those through the AWS Element and Media Convert, which is handling um, you know, all of the transcriptions, and then handling that, sending it back through the AWS Step Functions, um, again, issuing out notifications, and then you know, pushing those back out through the buckets for output, and Amazon CloudFront is handling the distribution through the different UI. As you can imagine, doing all of this is going to have challenges. We're parsing this information in real time during a session and trying to provide insights to a provider immediately. This isn't a post-batch process, this is real time. So um, one, because of the content that we're handling, security is a major challenge. Uh, two, data processing, right? To be able to turn 
that information back around in real time takes an enormous amount of processing. Storage, you know, we're storing video, uh, hour-long videos over and over and over again. You can imagine at scale, um, that's, that's an enormous amount of storage. And then ultimately deployment. So as we're iterating the platform, you know, making sure that we can get the deployments out seamlessly uh, so there's no impact on our users, very, very big challenge. All right, so with security, some of the challenges that we have is data transfer, access management, security groups, and firewalls. Um, as you guys know, Amazon's got an enormous suite of services, and we've really, really tried to leverage them through and through. And so as we talk about data transfer, we're leveraging Macy to really help us protect and give us insights on our PII. So all the personal information that we hold on a, on a patient, like this profile I was telling you about, you know, to, to be able to profile a patient and then to hold information about the medications, things like that, this is all very protected information and Macy does a great job at helping us do that. Second is guard duty, uh, making sure that our API calls are only, you know, monitoring the API calls and also our deployments. Uh, it's very important, so we're, we're, we use guard duty to help assist us with that. Last but not least is CloudWatch logs. You know, logging everything, all of our inputs, outputs are very, uh, very much logged and watched. So CloudWatch is a uh, vital part of that process. IAM, obviously um, the access management to our resources is very important. AWS Cognito really helps us provide an authentication method that's universal. Um, you know, all the different types of authentications coming from platforms, whether it's OAuth, SAML, um, you know, if, if it's single sign-on through Facebook or some other social media platform, um, Cognito's really helped us create an all-in-one solution for that. Um, then getting down into security groups and firewalls, um, the AWS WAF and AWS Shield have really done a stand-up job at protecting us against malware and DDoS attacks. All right, data processing. So as you can imagine here, we have challenges in networking and content delivery, media services, compute and data analysis. So networking con content delivery, we handle the CloudFront CDN, which again, great service, uh, Route 53 DNS, the API uh, gateway to help us with external connections, um, the VPC and Direct Connect. So going into the media services, this is really, this is really where we've, we've, we've had a great time uh, using the AWS services. Through the Kinesis video streams, it really allows us to process this video. Uh, the Elastic Transcoder helps us transcode this video in real time, you know, getting uh, different qualities of video in, transcoding those through to our different services. The Elemental Media Convert and the Elemental Media Live, collectively they all help us with those media services. Uh, so the compute and data analysis, <laughs> using a collective of GPUs, Amazon EMR Spark, um, with TensorFlow, Elastic Shift, uh, I'm sorry, Elastic Search, Redshift Spectrum, Data Pipeline, and AWS Glue, um, really, really help us get through the compute and data analysis cycle in real time. These are very important to make an environment where we can process extremely large amounts of data in a very short amount of time return that information um, in a graphical display. Storage. So pretty much everybody I think faces this challenge. How do, how do you store really private data securely? And um, you know, S3 has done a great job in doing that. Glacier, um, as I heard in the keynote this morning, S3 has got some new services that they've released, so we're gonna start leveraging those. Um, but as we talk scalability, we talk RDS, um, being able to provision the data and serve it out to Aurora and using DynamoDB um, as kind of a, a hybrid um, data architecture really helps us distribute these to many services quickly and get answers back um, in, in, in a you know, really reasonable amount of time. Last but not least is latency. Um, again, having low latency and getting this stuff back in an enormous amount of time 
um, the elastic cache and the serverless um, computes really help us retrieve this at scale. So whether we're trying to retrieve one media file or 100,000, um, you know, the cache services can really help us determine where we need to fetch that from. Deployment. So um, we've recently just started migrating all of our deployment services into AWS and uh, leveraging the OpsWorks, the EC2, Elastic Beanstalk, and Lambda to really kind of orchestrate uh, the CodeStar services for deployment, whether it's code commit, code build, code deploy, code pipeline. We use the entire suite to really help us, um, you know, version control, deployment, uh, building our different services, and then the pipeline to really kind of automate all of that. The management tools, CloudWatch, you know, again, the logging really helps us understand what's going on under the hood. Auto scaling, cloud formation, um, really helping us develop these systems at scale rapidly. Um, and again, CloudTrail, understanding all of the ins and outs, knowing what's going on. And then the messaging services, distributing that information out to uh, internal applications or out to our different messaging systems. So, the re key results and takeaways here is Amazon's advancements um, in the high performance cloud space, machine learning, and data analysis have really provided an environment where we can create a secure and scalable solution to help solve our nation's opioid epidemic. Um, you know, we are a learning organization and we are looking for more contributors to our mission. So, you know, if you have synergies, if you have platforms that you think can help contribute to this, by all means, please, you can approach me or you can email me at jim at thrive.com. And I'm gonna open this up for some QA and additional information. Anybody who's got some questions? Simultaneous session. So uh, we're, we've been able to, the machine learning aspect of this is all new to us. So, so we haven't deployed that in production yet. We're still testing. The video sessions is live. So uh, we've been actually leveraging a third party Zoom service uh, for, the media, for the, uh, the media sessions. So scalability hasn't really been a, an issue for us. We've been able to go from 10 sessions to 1,000 simultaneous sessions and not feel it.